Hello there, people of the internet. It's so good to see you. My name is Ulticore, and welcome back to the Boogeyman. Last time, if you remember, David and Keith were just chatting up a storm, talking throughout most of the video. Fantastic, right? Ugh. Okay, back to the game. What? Someone else in here? Helena? The boogie man? Where the fuck am I going? Apologi apologies. I really have no idea what's going on. How's everyone doing? An iron gate. You can't get to the other side. No dip, Sherlock! I was just gonna morph through it like the Terminator. Not the Terminator Arnold one, but the one. Where are these sounds coming from? Uh, so, yeah, fun. What the hell do I even have? Staples, music box, rope, videotape, fire axe, stale paper, paper scrap. We found the video cassette thing, the VHS, but I don't think it was even powered to anything. Just a bunch of locked doors and a freaking statue with the Bible verse of the whole thing. Keith's expression. Oh my god, this is so useless. This talks about the closet. And this is. What the fuck? Um, okay. It's like one of those paintings that stairs go all over the place. I can't think of the name right now. Whatever. This is confusing as hell. This doesn't do anything. It doesn't say anything. It's a flipping painting right there. What looks to be... One eye, you know, from Lord of the Rings. What the fuck? Okay, that didn't work. Not, don't know what we do with a fire axe and an iron gate. Maybe make some fire. Uh, I'll be back. I didn't mention it, but whoever was in here went batshit crazy. You shut up. Who am I gonna kill next? Someone help me. Someone went crazy. Oh, there's another room. Okay. That's gonna annoy me. And you, for that matter. How the fuck is this coming on? <laughs> I hope Keith and David are all right. It's been so long since they went out. Has it? <laughs> Hell no. Nah. Thank goodness you're safe. Oh, my face. Oh, my face. Where's Keith? He went looking for you, but I'm so glad. Now we'll just wait for those two to return and... Wait. Where are you going? I, I, I have to go. The man's going to come. He'll catch me. Don't go, Helena. Stay here with us. You'll be all right. Yes, Helena. You should be safe with us. To go out simply isn't... Helena! Okay, well, thank you. Let's... Richard and Keith! What are you thinking? Do you know how dangerous it is to go alone? Let go! If I don't run, that man will catch me. So, why not stay with us? You gotta calm down, lady. No! If, if I'm caught, Keith will... Keith? What about Keith? Hey, I don't know what you're saying. I think that was my phone. Shut up! Hey, wait! It 
Good job, you lost her. Oh, hey, it's the, um, the room right there. <laughs> Where'd she go? Lance? What are you doing out here? Y you guys! Hey, we saw Helena. She was okay. Really? Yeah, but I lost her. We gotta catch up. We should be nearby. She should be nearby. I'm taking you back to the room. What? You're going deaf? I just told you. Your woman's close by. And what's the plan if you're attacked? I can't run with that leg. You. Don't you tell me what I can't do. Lance, stop it. You know, that cocky freak is scary. But in my eyes, you're scarier. I'm grateful that you saved me. But past that, you're shady as hell. Get out. I never know what you're thinking. And for all the lengths you go to save people, you never show any emotion. You never get upset. Not to mention knowing all about my past and trying to scare me with that. <laughs> Just like that other guy. Tell me, why do you know about me? I liked your articles about the Bronx incident. They were pretty on point. I was wondering when I could read more, but more never came because the author had just left journalism. What? When I heard your name, I had my suspicions, and it turned out I was right. One leading question, and I'd gotten you. I didn't mean to go fishing through your past. I just read your articles. And you talk just like your articles read. Really has that unpleasant attitude. You should have told me that before. Why did you go and scare me for everything? I just wanted it easy for picking fights with everyone. Want to take it to court? I'll win. I really don't get you. Can't even tell if you're serious or a huge joker. But I can tell one thing. You're not just an unfeeling RoboCop. The whole never shaking thing is just an act, huh? I shouldn't be inviting citizens to panic. Stop saying crap about shoulds and shouldn'ts. Listen, I know. Deep down, you think we're just annoyances. Don't really care what happens to us. Cause ultimately, we're total strangers. And you're sketchy as hell for trying to hide that. Why you gotta hide that, huh? If we're just in your way, just say it! Don't go so far as protecting us that you'll kill yourself off. If you want to save your woman right now, then do it! Just do it! Go back to the room, Lance. I'll look for Helena too. Did you forget what you just said? You're an annoyance. Go away. Cold as ice. <laughs> Right you are. Just imagine him flipping the bird as he walks away. You go back with Lance. Keith! I'll be fine. Don't let him get hurt anymore. Go. What the fuck are you thinking, Keith? Facing the boogeyman all alone out here. He could be around any corner. The eyes are off. Okay, well, heaven above and people and whatever down below. What the hell? Oh, it's a free gate. Okay, there's those sounds again. Up and up we go. When we'll stop, no one knows. Oh. Oh. I've been waiting, detective. 
I'm waiting, detective. I'm in a very bad mood right now because I keep losing to you. Life really doesn't go the way you want it, huh? Even when you try to break up the monotonous days, it just doesn't work out. Sadly enough, even this fun game is almost over. Catch the boogeyman and you win. Happy end. <sighs> but that's all right. I'll put up a good fight with you, detective. Then we'll see what ending we're getting. It goes one way or the other. Victory or defeat. Nice and simple, right? Oh boy. I'll save right here. How the hell? You have a weapon! I don't have a weapon! Wait. Nope, never mind. Screw that then. I have a towel though. It's still wrapped around my arm. And he's gonna stab me in the butt. I don't know what the frick to do! Ah, oh, crap. This is unfair. Frick, 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 frick. Crap! <gasps> oh, I could just push him. I didn't know that. Come on, buddy boy. <laughs> oh, that was stupid. Who are you? I'm not anyone, detective. To struggle. Looks like you did things out of order, detective. But still, not bad. What? Helma? David, where's Keith? We came here together earlier, then we just split up. He must be that way. Let's go look for him. Goes in the opposite direction. Opera. Lola. Keith! Keith! Please, Keith, get up! Don't move him, Elena. Um, first, we need to stop the bleeding. <clears throat> Elena, are you there? I am. It's okay, Keith. We'll stop the bleeding. Can't see. Blood and... My eyes. Helena, are you there? Oh, please, Keith. Please, hold on. Please, don't leave me. You're the only one I can't lose. Helena? Hell no. What's wrong? What? You were crying. Did you have a bad dream? I had an awful dream. What was it like? I don't want to remember it. Helena, you need to wake up soon. I want to sleep a little longer. Wake up, Helena. 
The bad dreams are always the real ones. Who's there? Shirley! Were you asleep, Helena? I was dreaming. What kind of dream? A happy dream. Good. I'm glad you can get some sleep. Do you think you can eat anything? I'm done cleaning the storeroom, so I thought I'd make you something. I'm not hungry. You need to eat, Helena. It's not healthy. I'll make you something simple. Thanks for your help, Shirley. But it's fine. You don't have to do anything. I'm just glad you came. If you can get to sleep, then maybe you should sleep. But is, isn't it chilly by the window? Come to the bedroom. I want to be here right now. It's my favorite place. I always like to see my son coming home from kindergarten, or Keith coming home from work. This must be a great place then. Helena, you remind me of a friend of mine. She got along really well with her husband. So, when her husband left, she was very depressed. She told me that her son's support helped her get back on her feet. She was a really good person. When I was introduced to her, she told me she was glad to have a daughter-in-law. But I didn't know much about becoming anyone's family. I thought if my parents threw me away, how could I ever be part of a stranger's family? And she noticed my worry, so she told me this. While I had an unhappy marriage, through it, I met my beloved son. But not everyone can have such happy meetings. So, if you are unsure, I won't mind if you run away. Ultimately, I let anxiety get the best of me, and I ran. By the time I resolved to come back, she was already gone. I still regret my cowardice, but I know it's too late. David seemed to think that you and Keith didn't get along, but I, I never thought that for a second. You were always so concerned for Keith, and Keith always sounded kind when he spoke to you. I knew you must have really valued each other. I thought I'd like to be like that myself, but it's not so easy. I still don't know how to go about it. I'm sure you just need lots of wonderful memories. It's okay, Shirley. You two will be just fine. Thanks. Why do the people so close to you always have to go so soon. Must be David. I was right, okay. Hell no. Sorry, uh, I was cleaning the living room and I, I kind of broke something. Hold on. What did you break? Um, a glass cat? You broke a Suras... Suravoski... Ornament? What are you doing? That's why I said I should clean the storeroom. You know I'm clumsy. There's even more stuff in there. That would have been a disaster. Say what? <laughs> <laughs> you two are just too adorable. There's nothing to worry about, Shirley. You're a wonderful pair. I know you'll get on fine. I don't want any more bad dreams. I'm exhausted. I just want to have happy dreams.
I don't know. Holy hell. Did I do something wrong? Bad end for happy tree. Motherfucker. Ah, you know what that means? I'm gonna have to give you the correct and best ending. I'll be back. I'm gonna have to resort to a walkthrough because that'll take too long just to do by myself. I'll be back. No, I don't even know if I got this key last time. I don't think I did. So I had no clue it was there. Ooh. Yeah, I don't think I was in here. Oh, here's the VHS player. Oops. Play the videotape. Helena and the Boogeyman. <coughs> well, isn't that just creepy? Fantastic. Always got me, and I hated it so much. Thank you. Fuck you, too. Jeez. Ugh. <laughs> Thank you. Three swords? Um. Because the painting does it. There we go. A bit key. You know, I, I always wonder what was down here. I never figured out what. My ears. Helena. Helena. Keith? Keith, are you okay? Are you hurt? I'm fine. What about you? <laughs> Keith, Keith, thank goodness. Thank goodness. Helena, your leg's wounded. Hold on, I'll get over there. Keith, I'm fine. I'll be fine. There's nothing to worry about. Helena? Wait, Helena. I'll be right there. Don't move from that spot. I'm fine. I swear. I'll be fine. Wait for me, Keith. I'll... Don't worry, I'll... So this is the other side of the room. That's neat. <sighs> On to the next area. Yeah, I would have never figured this out, to be honest. Oh, that's joyful. I guess that's where he escaped to. And let's play this tape now. 
Oh, it's the guillotine room. One with the pain with the severed head. Tell him that again. Boogeyman chasing her. That's what happened to the door. Oh, that's... It's not nice at all. How does Helena always manage to get away from him? Jeez. That's new. Didn't know this was here. Let's go inside. David, lend me your lighter. Stay here. Stand by the painting and keep a lookout. Call for me if you see anything strange. Got it. Oh, more storage stuff. Parrot Lunier. Parah, Pierre, my laughter have I unlearnt. The image of radiance dis dispersed, dispersed. Black waves the banner upon the mast. Pierre, my laughter have I unlearnt. Oh, now return to me, souls veterinary. Veter Venerian Snowman of Lyric, your lunar highness, Pierre, my laughter. That is creepy as fuck. Ooh, a page. Might be the one that was torn out. After the performance last night, the poor little man strolled out of the town to the lonely churchyard. The wreath of flowers on the Columbine's grave had already faded. There he sat, and what a study for a painter, with his chin on his hand and his eyes turned towards me. He looked like a grotesque monument. A punchillo on the grave, strange and comical. If the public had seen their favorites, how they would have appalled and cried. Bravo, Punchillo, bravo, bravissimo. Hey, detective. Up to your silly profiling, it seems. Say, why don't I try doing the same? You're always carrying a little box with you. A precious little black box. A treasure trove of all you hold dear. Don't you notice the smell from the box? It's, you know what it is, don't you? Do you think you're better than me? Do you want to kill or befriend me? I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Who do I pray to straighten out this crooked tongue? The crooked tongue. <laughs> Sounds like David. Uh. Hey, buddy. Don't move. You're under arrest. <laughs> Your wifey's got a good butt on her. Who really makes me want to chase after her? What a pervert. Where is she? Where? Ah. Uh, 
detective. How careless. Trying to take me on in such close quarters. I hate to say such a rude thing to a detective, but not really. Dummy. What is he, a child? <sighs> Helena. Keith, my poor darling. You watched me as I wallowed in the depths of despair. And there you stood, with your back against the edge. Now, it's time that you finally learn. You need pride. You need peace. So go ahead. Take it all. But... Don't you see? In the end, there will be nothing left of you. Hmm. It's okay, Keith. Come on. Crumble balls of paper. Dick Anderson, age 39. Job, Assistant Police Inspector, Robbery slash mur Murder Division, Family, Wife and Two Children. The rest has been torn off. Dick? Now he's such a dick. <laughs> okay. I should probably use the lighter. How did Helena find me anyway? I'm surprised. Scrap of paper and an IC recorder. Something scribbled on the paper. You just want to hear her, don't you? Where is this? Who are you? What's going on? Hello, Miss Baring. Who? Uh, call me Boogie, ma'am. I'm about to begin a game befitting such a joyful night. I'd appreciate your participation as well. Sh can someone shut that guy up who's ever been gagged? God. Run from me, miss. I'm sorry, but I don't know what you mean. Where's my husband? Where? Shut the fuck up. Where am I? Why is that man tied up? Ah, he's an assistant. He can quickly explain to you how this will all work. If I should catch you, this happens. Understand the rules now? Where's my husband? Somewhere you wouldn't know about. Where's my husband? He can't save you. He's in my grasp. It's up to me if he lives or dies. Now run, Miss Bering. The game begins, and I am it. I guess that was the one guy in the piano room. <sighs> so, I was on the inside of the cell. Yep. Yes, you were. What the hell? This is new. Someone's diary. Oh, such X. I went searching for the young master as I hadn't seen him. I soon found him crying in an old cafeteria. He had played a prank and been scolded by the master. He said he had me copy Bible passages again. This time it was Adam's genealogy in Noah's Ark. I hate those chapters. I felt sorry for the young master and told him, You're not alone there. 
I hated copying scripture too, especially chapter about the Tower of Babel. He happily responded, Let's keep this our secret, old man. If mom and dad find out, they'll be angry. We'll be the only ones who know. The young master put a dial lock on one of the doors. I asked him, and he said it would be his secret room. Evident evidently, I'm not to end there either. I said I certainly wouldn't, but still asked for the coat. But he just whispered in my ear, The coat is what we hate. Do you remember? Now, was there such a code? Ah, well, I'll try asking him directly. The master has ordered him not to come over to the side of the mansion as it is. So a secret room is quite absurd. I've written quite a lot about his secret pranks in this diary as well. Once I finish, I should hide it away. Next to his secret room, I suppose. Adam's genealogy, Adam's genealogy, and Noah's Ark are the passages that they hate. He hate, he, the boy hates. Which means that's the code to the one room. No video camera appears to be busted. Cool. A few bloodstains are scattered on the floor. Huh. Yes. Oh, God. What the hell? A magazine from about 10 years ago. Uh, video, an old videotape. An empty drink bottle. An old videotape. Tons of movies. Both tapes and DVDs. There's a mix of old, old and new movies. Um, an old videotape. Old fashioned TV. Oh. New one. Take out tape and play it. Telna. Right? At last, I finally got a hold of you. Oh dear, hurt all over. But what else could I do? You just wouldn't stop running, miss. No matter how much I hurt you. But ah oh well, our game of tags come to a close now. Yes, you can't outrun the scary, scary boogeyman. Are you relieved it's over, or are you still scared? Well, madam, do you want to run? You're an unbelievable idiot. Say again? I called you an idiot. You thought I was running because I was scared? <laughs> you think I'm scared of you? Maybe you spent too long in your little closet world to understand. You've convinced yourself that women and children are all scared of you. What were you planning once you caught me? Kill me? And then what? You'd go to kill Keith, right? You told me you had Keith in your hands. Whether he'd live or die was up to me. I guess that was true. In all this time you've been foolishly chasing after me, you could never kill me. I'm weak. I can't be as strong as Keith is. But there is something I can do in all my weakness. If I can keep your attention away from Keith by running all the time, I'll run to the ends of the earth. You poor, stupid little boogeyman. You really are such a child. You just love bullying anyone weaker than you. Go ahead. Have fun in your little world. Call yourself the villain, a monster. But I'll never let you bring my husband into it. Don't you dare lay a hand on him. You talk too much, madam. That's terrible. Let's hurry and look for Helena. She must be nearby. Keith? Keith, what are you doing? We have to hurry! 
Keith, are you even listening? Hey, what are you staring at me? Are you asleep? Get a grip, come on. I'm awake. David, you look for Helena. She should be near. What about you? What are you gonna do? I'm going to kill a monster. Cool. I actually forgot David was with us for this whole time. I thought it was just me traveling by myself. Wait, Dad! Leave the door open, and don't turn out the lights in the hall. Why? The boogeyman will come. Uh, what kind of guy is this boogeyman? He has long nails and kidnaps kids. He lives in the closet. A kidnapper? <laughs> well, can't leave a guy like that on the loose. Alright, that'll give him a good beating. Hey, boogie, you in there? What, what the? Hey, let go! Dad? Dad! <laughs> it was a little tough, but I got him good. No worries, son. Old Boogie won't comfort you anymore. Really? Would I lie? Yes. Me and Mom are in the bedroom right there, you know. You still scared? Oh, need your stuffed bunny, do you? Or should I read you a bedtime story? Maybe the one with the fairies in it. No way. I'm not a wuss, Dad. I can sleep on my own. That's the spirit. Listen, Todd. If the boogeyman comes to get you again, Dad'll beat him up. I'm not gonna let anyone mess with you or Mom. Cause you're a police officer? Cause I'm dead. Good night, son. Should I leave the light on? It's okay. I've got you a mom. Good night. I love you. Oh, I thought it was actually going to come out of the closet there. Oh, there's a switch right there. I didn't see that before. Don't blame it on the sunshine. Don't blame it on the moonlight. Don't blame it on the good times. Blame it on the boogie. Have you ever thought about it, detective? Thought you have an enemy? Who or what it is, you don't even know. Maybe it doesn't even exist. Maybe it's all in your head. But, you know there's something tormenting you? Always making it so painful. You feel like the world's out to make you suffer. Too troublesome to make an enemy of the whole world, right? So, just making one enemy will do. I chose you as my enemy, Pikachu. <laughs> uh, okay. Have I become yours? Oh well. Either way, we're going to settle this right here, right now. Let's end this wonderful game now. Can you beat this final boss and take back your beloved wife? <laughs> What's so funny? Boy, you're really having a blast, huh? What's so funny that you can be all smiles all the time? 
total opposite of me. I don't remember the last time I laughed. But I guess we were pretty similar after all, in the sense that it was all a lie. You're always grinning ear to ear, but you're scared, aren't you? So you keep running. You can't go head to head with me. You and me are just acting. You're no scary monster, and I'm no paragon of justice. Final boss. <laughs> a big baddie should be a pretty sly guy, shouldn't they? But taking hostages, always on the run, the only thing you chase after is girls' rumps. You know, I wasn't planning to do anything with you. As long as the others were safe, I was fine leaving you be. I'd secure your hostages and scram. Then just leave you to the local police. Because I'm not chasing you. You just keep running away from me. What I'm really chasing after. Sorry, but it ain't you. That's right. It's not you. You're my enemy? Spare me the sleep talk. Why would I make my enemy a dunce who just sneaks away? A coward who hides in the closet and threatens kids. And your enemy? <laughs> Not me either. You've got a lot more enemies. If you go to the slammer, you're gonna be a real popular guy. I can tell. But this is a great chance. No hostages to get in the way. No one watching. So I can do whatever I like with you. Detective, criminal, that does shit. Fuck. Did not want to skip that. You chased after my wife's rump. That alone is enough reason for me to beat you down. Don't you think, Boogie? Anything to say. What the fuck? That is some weird shit. You can't afford to laugh anymore, can you? Back to your closet, boogeyman. You don't have what it takes to make it over here. <laughs> oh, I do five damage instead of the normal. Fuck me, fuck me, fuck me. You gonna move? Or shall I? Huh, I thought you were supposed to be scary. There's two of them. Oops. Huh. I thought you were supposed to be scary. This is really simple. But there's something wrong here. So is this just a warm-up practice, or are you actually gonna attack? Oh, is that it? I was just about to have fun. Wow. Keith has moves. Oh, he killed him. That was easy. Where do you think you're going, Lance? I'm gonna find him. They've been gone too long. Did you forget what Keith said? There'll be a burden on him to move around on our own. Well, then after all is said and done, we'll tell him what we did, just what he said. Of course, he might have all gone stone cold by that time. Don't joke about things like that. Sounds like a joke to you? Uh, we've got two. Maybe three corpses around here? What part of don't don't you get? Stop, you two. Don't fight. We'll go search together. I'll lead the way. Sophie and Shirley, you hold hands. And Lance, you watch the rear. Papa. You really want to go? Yes. We'll be all right together. 
and there's something I'm curious about. What's that? This whole incident may just be a great big farce. What do you mean? Let's get going. You know, I think I was supposed to go back here at a certain point. I may have fucked up. Helena, where are you, Helena? Oh. <laughs> Helena! David? Are you okay? <laughs> that man knocked me out. I, I woke up here. I, I was unconscious the whole time. Keith! Helena! How oh, Keith. Keith, where are you? Always on the run, huh? But marijuana addicts can move even faster than you. What's in that big head of yours? Todd? Oh. Brendan? You lose. Detective. No! Fuck me. Keith! You're Brendan. Why? Stop moving around. Keith, hell or not? We have to stop the bleeding, Lance. Richard, help me out. Sophie, find something to tie him with. Keith. Got you. Keith? You... Helena, when we get home, let's finish our conversation. No more running. No! Keith, stay with me, please! Keith! The Serpents and Stevie... Ten people died, all told. I'm sure glad we, to be alive now. Feeling glad to even have air to breathe. Listen, don't you say a word about all this. Especially not to your co-workers. If it takes money to shut your yap, I'll pay any price. Whoa, bribery. Where's that money coming from? My own pockets. Listen, you guys can distort the truth all you want and I won't say a peep. Because that's freedom of the press. But this, this is different. I've got no tolerance for people pointing and laughing at a wounded friend. Do I gotta tell you again? I'm not a gossip guy. I hate cops, sure. But I hate gossip too. I won't ask money, and I won't say a peep. Because I'm grateful to the guy. So quit hounding me. But, as an involved party, I've got a right to know what happened there. Just can't wrap my head around it. I talked to Brendan at dinner. Heard he got tired of the musty old castle and ran to Hollywood. Had a lot of fun in the movie biz. So what was the motive? Guy's gone silent. Sounds like he convinced you he was a goody two-shoes. But I bet you'd hear a different story in Hollywood. Now that's the kind of thing your lot should be writing about. Nobody knows people's pasts, usually. But it's easy to fool you into thinking other, otherwise, with a little acting. And once you know somebody's past, you can lead them by the nose. He tricked you all and tried to kill you. What a farce. Not sure of the motive yet, 
but he was pretty s systematic about it all. Spent a ton of cash beforehand to check up on all the tour attendees. He did have a background check on me as well. Oh, you? Why? Because I was going to be on that tour. No wonder I thought he knew me. The hell? So he just researched us? That's the oldest trick in the book for us, saying, I know all about you. It makes you superior to the other person, so you can, so you can control them. Then they freak out and have to submit. He, know he knew that tactic well. Seen right through people without any tricks. That was That's what makes a real monster, ain't it? In his case, he just used up money and connections to dig up people's past and play the part of a monster. But the research wasn't to select candidates, so he just picked randomly. Damn. What was he just it? Was he just in it for fun? Now, my turn to ask questions. What you tell me is the only way I can figure out this incident. Give me anything you've got. First, Brendan, or Boogie, rather. What kind of man was he? How should I say it? I suppose he had no emotion. That's how I saw him. He said, he's, he said such terrifying things without a care. He hardly showed any human feelings. He really was like a monster. Oh, shoot. Keith told me he was a real jester. Jester? Absolutely not. I would, not, I would have much preferred if he were at least a little silly. He was a very disturbing, terrifying man. He was totally calm as he did awful things. Richard, you seem to have a suspicion he might be Brendan. Why did you think that? When my daughter went missing and I panicked thinking that man might have taken her, Keith told me something. This was the kind of person who would show corpses as decoration. So if he did take Sophie, he show off proof of it, meaning she was still alive. Luckily enough, I didn't see them, but indeed, evidently, there were many dead bodies left around. As Keith said, my father, my daughter hadn't fallen into his grasp. He was correct in his assumption. That made me realize something unusual about, about what he said. Keith said he saw the moment Brendan's neck snapped and his corpse was quickly dropped into the basement. Isn't that odd? Why did he quickly put Brendan's corpse out of sight? Why did he treat him differently from the other victims? Because he didn't want you to investigating it. That's some keen insight you've got there. So you suspected this was a farce plotted by Brendan? No, no. Well, I just... I suggested that since Keith hadn't checked the corpse, he might still be alive. I only wanted to believe there was a chance he was alive. I had no conviction, convic conviction about the rest. So I didn't speak about it to Keith. I wouldn't dare risk throwing him off with my amateur opinion. Not to mention, we didn't know whether his wife was safe. Apparently, Keith saw the moment Brendan's head came off, actually. Was it... A doll? Right you are. Packed with neat little blood packs, it seems. Brendan was hung upside down and had his mouth taped up. It, and it was dark enough to be hard to tell who's who. Just dressing him up the same way made Keith assume it was him. On top of all those flashy rave lights, he dropped the corpse down below so it was impossible to check it closer. And since Keith saw the tour conductor killed right after that, of course, he'd think Brendan was killed too. If I said something, maybe this could have been resolved sooner, but I was just paralyzed with fear. I was only worried about my daughter. Even when Keith was running all over the place for us. Don't worry about it. Keith did all that because he wanted to, that's all. He's deeply glad you're all safe. Now, little lady, can we hear from you too? Hear what? Anything. 
what you thought, what you noticed. Well, I knew he was a fake because I've met the real boogeyman. What? Sophie, stop it! Not this tale again! Fine, if you say so, Papa. Guess I'm not saying a word. Go ahead, please. Meeting the real boogeyman sounds pretty juicy. Can you tell me more? Maybe not really met. He just touched my shoulder. But his hand was cold as ice. Right away, I knew it wasn't human. The guy's hands were human, though. They had warmth, so I knew he was just a regular guy. <laughs> so the boogeyman's hands are cold, huh? I ought to tell that to my little squirts. Wait a minute. Oh my god, it just dawned on me, guys and gals. Sophie is from the Sandman. Oh my god. Freaking 15 or 12 something parts in. I don't even know. And I just thought of that. She was referring to when she was in the Sandman's world or something. And she hid in a closet to avoid detection. And the Sandman actually touched her shoulder. Oh my god. That's when we first saw him in this whole world that Yuri, the developer, has created. Oh my god. I'm so stupid. Oh. That's insane. Anything else you noticed? I feel like you might get angry if I say this. I won't. Tell me. That guy had this cold and emotionless air. Like you couldn't tell what he was thinking at all. It reminded me of Mr. Keith. A little. You still think that way now? Not even. Because Mr. Keith got really mad at me. He was like, Don't worry about your papa ever again. Red paint? On his face? There was nothing like that. It was all red from blood spurts, though. Really? Keith told me he had weird paint on a torn paper bag. And one more thing. Did you see any red graffiti in the castle? Or any monsters? Hear any phones ringing? I didn't. Mr. Hoover, you're colorblind, if I recall. Maybe you just couldn't see the paint. Yeah, but it's white and pink I get mixed up. I can see red just fine. Well, uh, man, you miss? I saw quite a bit of the castle, but none of that. Did you hear that from the others? Don't get me wrong. I don't think you're lying. The others said they saw nothing too. But then, that makes Keith the one talking nonsense. I don't think Keith is necessarily lying. What do you mean? Because people don't always see the same things you do. Makes sense. Thanks for the assistance, you two. Sorry about calling you in two weeks after the fact. Is not everything settled yet? The police there are in the middle of their investigation. My role is just to assist. I'm going to report your testimonies to them, and that's that. I'll be off now. Eric, take them to the entrance. When our son died, I thought my own life was over too. I couldn't think about anything. Nothing had any taste. But tears would suddenly come anyway. I don't remember anything about what I did back then. But I do remember one thing. That Keith was always at my side. When I wailed and shouted, he'd hug me, stroke my hair, say it was okay. Eventually, I adjusted to life without a son. I found I could laugh again. But when I got my, my own emotions back, I realized Keith had stopped laughing. I had been, I had been broken 
and so had Keith. Over time, I was able to heal, but he didn't. He was still stuck in the moment of Todd's death. He was always supporting me, so he never faced up to himself. I struggled to be at least a little stronger. Next time, I would protect him, since I wanted him to laugh again. But I couldn't. I couldn't repay anything to Keith. And I realized I was a burden on him that would keep him from ever walking again. So even if we're far apart, as long as he can laugh again, then that's what's the best choice I can make. My wife always brings me warm milk before I go to bed. And last Father's Day, my little squirt tried cooking me a meal. I definitely don't need milk to go to sleep. And the goods and the kids cooking, I'll be blunt, it ain't good. But I'm glad for it. Usefulness and collateral don't mean a thing with this stuff. Keith didn't stay close to you expecting something in return. That's just what he wanted to do. You guys have got too much sympathy. You don't mind getting hurt for the sake of the other. But can't you notice that one of you being hurt hurts the other? You've just been getting more and more wounded as you go along. You're propping Keith up too, Helena. He can fight day after day because he knows you're waiting at home. As much as I tease him about it, don't think of yourself as baggage. Depend on him as much as you need. That's what he wants too. Keith. Keith grabbed my hand and smiled, even though he was stabbed and wounded. And what'd he say? Got you. Because he finally got what makes him happiest. But, man, too much discrepancy between you guys' testimonies and Keith's. Just how am I going to report this to their department? Hey, Helena. He went back home from the hospital today, right? Can I come talk to him with them now? Oh, his voice is killing my throat. I'm sorry. Before he goes back home, there's a place he's going to go visit. And I'm planning to head there myself. Oh... Keith. I always wanted to cry like this. I never forgot about him. Not for a single day. Ever since he died, I was scared. I felt like even the slightest sign of weakness would make it all crumble. I acted like I felt nothing, like nothing disturbed me. I thought then I might be able to fool everyone, even myself. It was so stupid. I was broken a long time ago. It was all garbage, but I acted like a champion of justice. It always felt off. Whoever I was working for, I, I never felt repaid. When I saw you were safe and you came up to me, finally I felt happy again. Acting strong just made me weak. It was pointless. Todd would never forgive his father staying broken forever because I promised I'd protect his mom. I'll take off the blindfold. I'm going to laugh even if it's at a stupid TV show. If I'm pissed, I'll get mad, and if I'm sad, I'll cry. First, I guess there'll have to be counseling. Something seriously wrong with my head, seems like. It's gonna be a busy time. It's gonna be so busy, I won't be able to do it alone. Helena, 
I don't think I can deal with just being a good loser. I want a chance. Let me chase after you. Let me get down on my knees. You're the only one I want waiting for me. There's no need for a chance. Didn't I tell you? Divorce or decide? I've decided. Haven't you too? That's sweet. We only ever need one umbrella. So we hold it together. And if it's fine if we get a little... And it's fine if we get a little wet because... It'll soon be sunny again. Happy end. Come rain, come shine. Oh, that's beautiful. I loved every bit of this. Congratulations on being the boogeyman, and thank you for playing this game. Additionally, so if you played the previous two games in the se series, the Whatever Man series has come to a turning point. The general storyline will come, will end in the next game. I have plans for serious and silly extra chapters afterward, so please play those if you're interested. Lastly, once more congratulations on beating the game, and thank you for playing. Cool. Oh, bonus scene. So how many times have we come here again? Oh, five, I think. Ugh, I can't stand it. We've told them the same story over and over. There's going to be rumors at school about Sophie frequenting the police station. Now, Sophie, don't complain. The police are doing their best, and it's been a month now. This must be the last time. I'm sure of it. Does my princess require a beverage to quell her temper? What shall it be, your majesty? Orange juice. Very well. I will go buy some. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, when those dogs attacked me, 
You saved me, right? Is she talking about the Sandman? Oh my god. That makes sense. I can't imagine any other reason why those dogs would fall asleep so quick asleep so quickly. <laughs> Two little pretty eyes. Wow. Thanks. I'm having a great time lately. I'm getting along great with Papa and Annie. And Anna. And Reagan. Well, if she wants to get along, I'll give her a chance. Things are so much better than when I carried all my burden myself. Now I know there's someone always looking out for me. Sometimes, I really miss you. You're doing okay, right? How about the other fairies? You know I... Oh, you see the eye? <laughs> um, sorry to butt in. What? Hold on, wait! You've got the wrong idea! I'm not a weirdo or anything. I promise. Don't touch me. Brats with a thing for daydreaming aren't the most comfortable people to be around. I'm not daydreaming. The eyes are just looking at both of them. Like a TV. <laughs> Keep it between us, but I've met some... some fairies. <laughs> so you don't believe me? No, I do. I met one when I was a kid, too. Really? Really? Yeah, this hobo in the area always had a head full of dandruff. <laughs> so I call him the dandruff fairy. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. <clears throat> and I've got a co-worker who eats non-stop cup noodles. The cup noodle fairy. Would it be introduced? Why don't you believe me? A 37-year-old who believes in fairies ain't exactly social, socially adjusted, don't you think? But hey, if they do exist, put a request to one of your fairy friends to get me some wings. Big fluffy pink ones. What do you use those for? Just want some wings, why not? Mr. Detective wanna fly away. <laughs> you angry? Ooh, better stop off. One of your friends might get might cast a spell. Turn me into a fluffy white kitty. Maybe instead of filling your head with stupid fantasies, fill in that chest a little. It's so pathetic I can't even look at it. Uh. Oh my god, the Sandman's gonna do something with those eyes. <laughs> What's wrong? Ugh. Haven't been able to sleep since last night, even though I'm sleepy. It's weird. Did you take any medicine? Yep. Anxiolytics. I can't say the word. Sleeping pills. Guess they're not working. Let's talk to each other then. Before you know it, you'll be sound asleep, and it'll be morning. Don't you need sleep? You don't have to stay up for me. It's fine. I'll stay up with you until you're snoozing away. <laughs> Great job, Helena. Maybe some exercise would have been better. Oh my god, that's so awesome. Alright, let's look at the bios. Oh god, Keith Baring. Okay, Helena Baring. David Hoover. Sophie Grundler. Lance Canal. Richard Grundler. Shirley Weber. Dick Anderson. Eric Simpson. Stevie Small. Todd Baring. And that's it. If you want to read those full descriptions, just pause the video. I don't want to read anything else. My voice is dying and killing me. And thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did and you have a comment, a suggestion, or whatever, please leave it down in the comment section below. I'll check out your comments. And if you want to play this game, a link to it will be down in the description below. And, well, I'll see you 
next time. Goodbye!